This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Way. LarryBrownSports.com is a website. And one of their writers, uh, Gray Papke, he wrote about the five teams he felt made the most improvement this offseason. So he's got the Indianapolis Colts on this list, and he's right, by the way. They made a great trade with San Francisco for a really nice defensive lineman. Okay, they brought in a quarterback. They had a nice draft overall. They added Michael Pittman Jr., right? Jonathan Taylor, even though I, I think he's a little injury prone, I'm a little nervous with Jonathan Taylor. He's really talented, don't get me wrong. But he's had his share of injuries, but still, the kid's super talented. Uh, the Colts, they had a great offseason, man. They did. They, they drafted a future quarterback. So, you know what I love about them? They made the Brissett move, which, okay, it's not a, a marquee, but it kind of got you by. You tried it. Now you made the Phillip Rivers move, and then you made the Eason move. I mean, I love when you're taking quarterbacks all over the place because you're looking for that way to turn the corner after you lost out on Andrew Luck. I mean, you know, pretty strong. The Browns. I know the Browns every year are all hyped up and everything else. But, okay, you look at it. They signed Jack Conklin, uh, Jedrick Willis Jr. Uh, They drafted, right? So they added some stuff. um, What's it called? They got Grant Delpit, too. Uh, to help out in the secondary uh, in the draft. He dropped a little bit, which was a value pick for them. Uh, they had a really good offseason overall, right? I like what they did. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Obvious, right? You add Brady, you all of a sudden become a contender. You add Gronk, which should help you out with depth at tight end. I'm not, you know, whatever. Antoine Winfield, all that. They did a really, really nice job in, in the offseason. you got to say they're one of the better teams. The Arizona Cardinals. I love what they did this offseason. They stole DeAndre Hopkins from Houston, right? Okay, and then uh, they go and, uh, and they unload David Johnson's contract. Uh, they add uh, Devon Kennard, Isaiah Simmons, right? So they did a lot of good things again this offseason, made the offense better for the kid around him by adding a legitimate number one wide receiver along with Kirkland and Fitzgerald. That's a sick trio that they've got going on there, right? And they throw in the Dolphins. The Dolphins are the number two. The list is number one is the Cardinals in their eyes, number two Dolphins, number three Bucks, number four Cleveland, number five Indianapolis, and in the Dolphins, you and I know everything that they did. They talked about it, adding Byron Jones, Shaq Lawson, Kyle Van Oy to the league's worst unit. They brought in Jordan Howard, a legitimate backfield options, capping it off with the selection of Tua uh, in the draft, along with two offensive linemen to help protect them. 2020 may be a, a year too soon for the Dolphins, but they're very clearly on, on the right track thanks to a great offseason. And what why I read the whole thing and all – because I wanted to give it substance and give it credence because, and, and the credit it deserves because all the other teams were legitimate. They all, I got to tell you, and I know you're going to kill me for this, I thought the Jets had a really good offseason too. They almost could have been on this list, okay? I don't think they're going to go anywhere because I don't believe in Adam Gase. You know what I mean? I don't think he'll communicate with players, but they had a really good offseason season. Oh, every draft pick. Remember during the draft shows, we were it. like, "Man, they." they, they I, I, I hate it. Pick. I hate it. I hate it. They they did really good. But man. but hey, Gase is driving that bus. He's gonna drive it right off a cliff. Right, right. Douglas did a nice job with the off season, and then and then Gase will screw up the the regular season. So uh, that's where I'm not worried about the about the Jets at all because they've got Adam Gase. But what I love about this article is that the guy that wrote this sat down. And he looked at it objectively all throughout the league on teams that improved. And all five of these teams made significant improvements and strides. And they bettered themselves in a big-time way. And I believe the Dolphins are one of those teams. And I know they had the picks and the cap space to do it. And But 
you, you still got to do it and kind of feel good about it. There have been plenty of times that they've done all kinds of moves and I didn't feel good about it. You know what I'm saying? But I really feel good about what they've done this offseason. And it's nice to see that other people around the NFL are giving the Dolphins the love that they deserve. You know? That, that's, where, that's where, for me, that's where I, I like to see that, okay, others are seeing what we're seeing here in Miami. And because last year, there was so much crap and so much, oh, they're tanking and they're not trying and everybody wants off the team and everybody's asked to be traded and the players have quit and, and every one of those narratives were wrong. And then, and then the lazy, which we got plenty on radio, on print, on TV, the lazy hears someone say it, and then they assume that that's right, and so they'll go with that same narrative. Oh, no, yeah, they're tanking. And then when you try to explain to people, wait a minute, hold on a second. Tanking is, you know, they're specifically trying to lose. They're not trying to lose. They're trying to win. They're just trying to win with young because that's what they can build on. There's the old stupid Dolphins would try to win games with old players that have no future. So you're hurting yourself because, see, when you win with young people, you can build on that. When you win with older players, you're not building on anything. You replace them with younger players that have no experience, and then you have a setback. That's what would happen with the Dolphins. They would count on older guys and free agents, they would help them win six, seven, eight, nine games maybe a tenth to sneak into the playoffs, and then they'd replace them the next year with a, with a couple of bad draft picks, and then you're wondering, well, why did they take a step back? Well, that's because they're not very good in the draft. And then they got to go get in free agency some veteran to be a Band-Aid. And you try to explain to people they're not trying to lose, dude. Don't you see? That's why they didn't keep Rosen starting. If they're trying to lose, they would have kept Rosen in there for 16 games. But, but again, people will believe whatever they want. So that narrative was out there. It's nice to see that somebody actually took the time to look around the league and say, hey, what are the teams that have made the improvements? And they thought the Dolphins were number two on that list. I like it. I like it. I'm a fan of that. 